Hello YouTube, it's Tony. So today I'll show you a guide as well as review on the Greater Millie abilities which are Barge, Fury, and Flurry. So I'm going to talk about their normal abilities then the Greater abilities. I will also provide you sample rotations for how to use them. However, I do have a disclaimer though. This is not a Millie DPS guide and what I demonstrate isn't fully optimized. So to kick things off, I have Normal Barge, no pun intended and that teleports you to melee distance toward your target that is within 10 squares. It will deal up to 125% ability damage while also binding your target for 6.6 .6 seconds. Also, if you have mobile perk, it will have the cooldown, but you will not get any adrenaline for activating this. So by itself, it's not a really good damaging ability. In terms of mobility, it's okay as long as there's a target in front, but it's rather inconvenient to use. Although, since it doesn't share the same cooldown as Search even in the Wilderness, it could be really useful for escaping PKers. So now let's talk about Greater Barge, which you can buy the Codex off the GE for a whopping 275 mil to unlock, which will then replace Regular Barge. It has the same effect and cooldown as Regular Barge if you're constantly attacking your target. However, we do have additional effects, and that happens when you stop attacking anything for at least a few seconds and if you activate Greater Barge as your first ability since you stopped attacking. The first effect is that every 0.6 seconds since you stopped attacking, then Greater Barge's damage is increased by 10%. This caps off at 225% ability damage for 6 seconds or 10 ticks. If at least 4.8 seconds has passed since you stopped attacking, then you'll unlock the second effect. When using Greater Barge as your first ability since then, the next melee channeled ability you use within the next 6 seconds will turn into a melee bleed ability which you activate in one global cooldown. It will do the exact same damage per hit and the same number of hits as the channeled equivalent. So Tony, what constitutes as not attacking? If you were out of combat stance prior to using Greater Barge then you'll unlock both effects. If you're already in combat then using any ability that doesn't do damage such as activating sigils, anticipate, freedom, Berserk, etc. will actually count towards the timer for stalling. However, if you use auto attacks before Greater Bards, then it will break the timer. So here are more details on how you use this. When your character hits the channeled ability, it will only hit once, and then bleed it for the rest of these hits. Now despite turning this into a damage over time bleed ability, this does not follow the bleed ability rules. That means damage and accuracy is calculated and rolled for each individual hit and is boosted by damage modifiers such as Critical Hits or Berserk. The 4.6 second rule means 2 global cooldowns worth of non-damaging abilities. Now, since you have 6 seconds to use a channeled ability, that means you can use up to 2 regular abilities before the effect expires. Now when it comes to queuing Barge, I'm not sure whether this is a bug or intentional, but it doesn't seem to work sometimes. It's probably because the game recognizes this as an auto attack happened first. Although I do have ability queuing enabled, I don't personally queue Barge. It is best to click your target or target cycle from a distance, so that way you don't accidentally use an auto attack before Greater Barge. Now that I've explained the basics, let's talk about how you can use this ability to your advantage. Generally speaking, you want to use this with Berserk because it allows you to use more abilities inside a Berserk rotation, mainly thresholds. The best channeled ability options you have are Assault, Destroy, or Greater Flurry. Now, if you were to use this inside a Berserk rotation, you're going to have to use either Adrenaline Potion or a Limitless Sigil, or otherwise you won't have enough Adrenaline to get that bleed off after you activate Berserk. Well, if you do get a lucky Relentless proc, then you don't need to worry about this. I will demonstrate you two rotations, and the first rotation is when you have 100% adrenaline but you haven't attacked anything in a while or you're starting a fight. So what you're going to do is first use Berserk, then you're going to use Barge. After this, you'll follow that up with two basic abilities and finally hit your channeled ability of your desired choice. Now this only works at the start of a fight or after a long time gated boss transition, so that means you're going to have to use Rotation B which I'll show you right now. This happens in the middle of a boss fight when you're building towards Berserk. This also requires approximate knowledge on how much adrenaline you get per hit. So you're going to build to at least 92% adrenaline or however much adrenaline you need 
before one ability from 100% Adrenaline. When you've reached that point, what you're gonna do is hit a non-damaging defensive ability, then after this hit Berserk. Now you're gonna hit Greater Barge and follow that up with two basic abilities, and finally use one channeled ability. Now this situation is more common since it works at any point during the boss fight. In case anyone's wondering how I use thresholds before 50%, well that is because I activated Limitless Sigil. The reason you want to use a non-damaging defensive before 100% is because it's better than just stalling itself at 100% Adrenaline. If for whatever reason you end up not attacking something for a while, but you don't plan on zerking or ZGSing, then this is what you're gonna do. Greater Barge by itself is one of the strongest non-flanking or lunging basic abilities for melee. If you have a channeled ability that you want to use, then you'll then use it as a bleed ability. However, it is a net DPS loss if you're intentionally stalling for Greater Barge, rather than continuously attacking if you're using it for this purpose of not using Berserk or ZGS in a rotation. So now I'm going to do a practical demonstration at a boss. This is P4 of Araxor. Don't worry because this is not my default Araxor preset in case you want to flame me for that. So what I'm going to do is use Berserk at the start, and then I'm going to use Barge and two basic abilities followed by Assault, Destroy, and Greater Flurry. Pretty much that will shave down most of Araxi's HP, and she should almost be dead by now. Yeah, I'm a little rusty here, so this is only my first kill in a few months. With that being said, what is my overall review on Greater Barch? Well, for dual wield abilities, it lets you get 3 thresholds off in a Zerk rotation. For a two-handed weapon, your only good option is Assault, although even if you're scythe camping, it still allowed me to get more basic abilities within a Berserk. So the most important thing is that you don't have to worry about a channeled ability being cancelled if you have to move for whatever reason. All in all, despite its hefty price tag, it's absolutely worth buying because it changes the power creep of melee DPS rotations. Moving on, we have Normal Fury. This is the channeled ability that hits up to 3 times, with each hit doing more damage and increasing the critical hit chance. Ideally speaking, it's best to cancel as soon as the second hit goes through. What you're gonna do is hit any other ability after global cooldown or queue that ability. Yeah, so you're gonna have to plan a hit on what ability you wanna use next after regular fury. The amount of damage you'll do if you're cancelling is 157% with a plus 10% critical hit chance. However, if you avoid cancellation, it will delay the DPS and adrenaline gain by a bit, so that makes it less ideal for an AFK Revolution user. And this brings me to the Greater Counterpart, which is Greater Fury. Instead of 3 hits this time, it will become 1 hit of 157% damage. It's used the same way as 2 hit Fury, although this time you don't have to manually cancel that. The next ability hit splat used will have a plus 10% increased critical hit chance. Also, if Fury becomes a critical hit, then the next ability hit splat is a guaranteed critical hit within the next 30 seconds. Now, auto attacks will not consume this effect. However, despite bleed abilities not benefiting from critical hits, it will actually consume this, so don't use bleed abilities after this. Here is my demonstration on Greater Fury. There isn't really much to explain towards this other than not using a bleed ability after Fury. Some people who are going for boss records might want to kickstart with a guaranteed critical hit buff. Other than that, where would this belong in the basic ability rotation? That really depends on the situation, but I'd put this behind Cleave, Sever, and Decimate. Even further if you were to use flanking or lunging abilities. That being said, my overall review is that this is a very quality of life based ability, as you no longer have to cancel Fury. It really isn't much of a DPS power creep for melee, but I like to use this in my revolution rotation just because I camp weapons. For this reason, it's a little too expensive for how much additional DPS it will offer. Moving on, we have Flurry. This is a dual wield channeled ability that hits up to 4 times over 3.6 seconds. It will do 94% damage each hit, but it can also hit adjacent targets within melee distance. However, if the main target dies, then the ability ends. How good is this threshold, you might ask me? Unfortunately, it is pretty terrible to use. In fact, it's actually one of the worst melee thresholds out there. For Greater Flurry, once again, you're gonna buy the Codex from the GE, but this time it only costs around 50 mil to unlock, which will replace regular Flurry. This time, if you were to use this on a single target, 
each hit of Greater Flurry becomes 157% damage. Otherwise, if you were to use this on a multi-target, then it's still 94% every hit. Also, each hit of Greater Flurry will reduce the Berserk cooldown timer by 1.2 seconds, 4 up to 4.8 seconds at 4 hits in total. Now, I'm going to demonstrate how to use Greater Flurry. The number of hits really depends on the situation. I'm going to start with 2 hitting Greater Flurry, and this is only done if you're in a rush. Since I'm using a Limitless Sigil Zerk Rotation, as it lasts 6 seconds you must use enough thresholds before it expires. In order to 2 hit Flurry, you're going to cancel after 1 global cooldown. So as you can see right here, I'm getting not only a Bleated Assault, but also a 2 hit Flurry and a Full Channel Destroy, all of which is inside a Berserk Limitless Rotation. For 3 hit Flurry, this is best to use in most situations. This is because it does the most optimal DPS inside a Zerk Rotation, and it's personally what I use the most. You're gonna cancel this shortly after it says 2 on the buff bar. Inside a Berserk Rotation, 3 hit Flurry is the third best threshold to use. And finally we have 4 hit Flurry, and this is only used if you're trying to get Berserk off cooldown sooner. It will take longer to use, which makes this less damage per tick. Based on Berserk and Greater Flurry's cooldown, you'll be able to shave 9.6 seconds cooldown from Zerk, as you'll use this ability twice. So in order to do a 4 hit Flurry, you're gonna cancel shortly after it says 1 on the buff bar. Now if you really want to get Berserk off cooldown ASAP, then you may as well bleed Flurry with Greater Barge instead. So here is my overall review on this. This upgrade is definitely more affordable than Greater Fury. It's also really nice for bringing Berserk off cooldown faster. You know how I said regular Flurry is not worth using at all? Well this time with Greater Flurry, it actually makes this somewhat of a decent threshold to use, and it's another reason why Dual Wield Melee does more DPS. However, because it's Dual Wield Melee exclusive, it's only good if you're planning to learn Dual Wield Melee rotations, which have a steeper learning curve than 2H themselves. So we have reached to the end. A lot of people have asked on my stream why do you do so much melee DPS, well, that's because these melee abilities help a lot. In terms of upgrade order, I would definitely go for Barge first. Now depending on the situation, you could either choose Fury or Flurry. Generally speaking, I would go after these melee abilities as soon as you get the decent melee upgrades such as tier 90 weapons or tier 90 armor. So yeah, thanks for watching and I hope it helps. If I missed anything, feel free to ask. Also, be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already because I will do more guides like this in the future, including a melee DPS guide as well as melee upgrade guides.